It's Disability Pride Month and it's all about celebrating disabled people and all that they do. So for this vlog, it was only right that we highlighted our very first Purple Goat. I'm Martin Sibley. I'm the founder of Purple Goat and general disability inclusion advocate. So the background story, I suppose pretty relevantly, I have a disability since I was born. So living life as a wheelchair user, needing a lot of care day to day around that has shaped a lot of my worldview and my lived experience. I worked for about five years at a disability charity and learned a lot about the global scale of challenges that disabled people face and also something called the social model, which individually for me personally showed me that me having my disability doesn't mean I'm the problem, inverted commas, and that society can and will, when we talk and come together, make the barriers go away and make the world more inclusive. So that social model part was really, really important. I then spent like a decade starting and running different companies, including a magazine called Disability Horizons, a Commable, which was a travel website. And then, yeah, I was generally beavering away in the kind of disability inclusion world, but also this entrepreneurial world as well, and came across the notion of how influencers can be really powerful to work with brands in general for advertising objectives, but also how that could create a lot of positive change around representation of disability in media, in marketing, giving role models to younger disabled people. And so all of that led to starting Purple Goat in 2020. We got ChatGPT to generate what a typical founder schedule looks like. What do you think and how does it compare to yours? Yeah, okay, I think that some of the themes are broadly correct. Like I do personal development, journaling, I have breakfast, I go to networking things, I do deep work and lots and lots and lots of meetings. I think I'd be interested what the average age of that kind of founder would be. I'm recently turned 40 and I could imagine having that intensity of work in my 20s, but I don't have the same energy in the tank that I did 10, 20 years ago. And I would say with the specifics of my disability, there are fluctuations in my energy, particularly sort of winter time is a lot tougher for me when my body's colder and tighter and all that kind of stuff. So I think the broad themes are basically bang on, but I definitely don't wake up at half as five. And I definitely have to make that routine work for me as a disabled person, but as someone that just generally doesn't buy into some of those kind of hustle culture. I think it's about the output, the outcomes and the objectives rather than sticking to inputs, just to stick to a narrative. Who were the people that helped you out along the way? So yeah, I mean, a lot of people on the way without doing like an Oscar speech, parents, family, friends, <laughs> but more specifically with Purple Goat. And by the way, those other people were very there for me over my life. But with Purple Goat, it, I think one theme I look back on was maybe like an echo chamber within the disability world. And so when I had this coaching session that led to the idea of what if there was an agency that sat between brands and disabled content creators, I found the GOAT agency and really chatting a lot more with Aaron, what GOAT did and does and how that could apply to disability. We are launching Purple Go as of today. We've been briefing our teams on it for the past couple of weeks and getting them up to speed and everything that's going on. So what is Purple Go? Purple Go is a, a marketing agency in a similar guise to the GOAT agency. The big difference is it's targeted at one community, one big undervalued community, and that being the disabled community. A big opportunity for us to, to make some changes in the world. So, I mean, definitely Aaron and everyone at GOAT were hugely impactful in being able to have the clients and the conversations that we now have. And then obviously at Purple Go, it was the first few months was me um, and then Chris Cusack, who some people know passed away um, a year and a half after. Um, and then Harriet joined and then Dom and Danny and Dan's been very involved since day one. 
and the five of us are the senior management team now. Obviously Dom, um, particularly when I had a bit of health challenges a couple of years ago, was phenomenal being able to step up and step out and like take those sort of bigger meetings with clients and media um, and he's a good good friend as we're all close friends I think in general but I've known Dom a long 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 time and it was uh, amazing to finally get to work with Dom as well. So Martin you mentioned knowing Dom a long long time and finally being able to work with him so we've decided to put that friendship to the test. <laughs> <laughs> Vacuous friendship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Built on sand. <laughs> what are each other's middle names? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is going to be brilliant. <laughs> and Martin Thomas. Is that because Thomas behind us? No. But <laughs> no it's no. not. It's John. John. Close. Is yours Gerald? Arthur. Oh. Nil pot. I mean, yeah, no, nil pot, for sure. What is their favourite snack? <laughs> I mean, oysters comes to my mind. And chips. I mean, oysters isn't a snack to most people. To you, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be absolutely hounded after this, aren't I? <laughs> um, but yeah, you're technically right. It's my favourite thing, so chop. And I love a chip. And you love a chip. Who is their celebrity crush? <laughs> <laughs> Him? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. Is this appropriate? That was We've good. got like 50%. Yeah, yeah you guys besties. Yeah, besties. Besties would you, forever. Would you say Martin is your best For sure. Aww. Life bestie. Life <laughs> Yeah. What are your future goals and aspirations for Purple Goat? So the, the simplest way of at the very beginning and now and in 10 years time is that when you're doing advertising campaigns, marketing campaigns, you want that to represent all the different people in the world and the population as part of society. And the stat at the very beginning of Purple Goat we had was 0.06% of ads featured disabled people when 20% or more, depending on different kind of censuses and surveys and definitions, but we're maybe around 1% now. So we've still got more than 19% to go to close that gap. And even when the gap's closed, the work is to still make that more creative and obviously for brands to get ROI on that investment and for the representation to be authentic and true to the lives of disabled people. So it's all of that good stuff. But the main point is we're way under indexing and that's what we need to fix and that's what we're doing at Purple Goat.